Hey guys, it's Matt with bleepinjeep.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this. A relay and fuse box all wrapped in one. Now these commonly go on the internet for over $450 for less fuses and less relays. I got this at the junkyard for $12. With a little bit of re-engineering, you can make it too. But don't try this at home. Don't forget to check out my website, bleepinjeep.com. We've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube, none of the boring stuff. We also have hats and t-shirts, muffler bearings, flux capacitors, and more. So check it out, bleepinjeep.com. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel and the Facebook page. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we should go over real quick is what is a relay. Basically, a relay is a switch for your switch. Anytime you want to wire an accessory or, let's say, some off-road lights, you want to wire in a relay. And the reason being, you don't want those high amperage wires going into your cab to the switch. Basically, your switch is not rated for that. Also, you don't want those inside the cab. You want to keep those in the engine bay. So you put this relay inside a relay box in the engine bay. Your switch switches this, and this switches the lights on and off without having to have those wires all over the place and in your cab. All right, guys, we're in the basement today just because it's a little bit quieter and warmer down here. Now let's go over the parts list here real quick. The first thing you'll need is one of these fuse and relay boxes from a mid-90s Jeep Cherokee. Now you can use one from any vehicle, any year, but um, it's not going to be the same as this. And this is one of the easiest and uh, coolest ones that i found. It's going to have seven relays across here. You'll be able to have seven of these, uh, or six of these mini fuses. And you've got, I think, eight of these maxi fuses that you can use. And I'll go ahead and show you how to wire that here in a little bit. But what you want to do is get enough cord. I, I kind of cut this too short, but try and get as much cord as you can on there. You'll have to strip that harness back and cut it off. Now you get these at the junkyard, again from a mid-90s Jeep Cherokee. And um, I paid, I think, $12 for this at, at the pull-apart. So uh, you don't have to, but you might as well get two of them because it's going to make it a little bit easier to steal some parts from the other one. And I'll show you that here in a little while. You also want to make sure to get enough of these maxi fuses the relays and these mini fuses, probably more than you'll need. So go ahead and grab that. The next thing you'll need, in the uh, description below I've got two links. One of them is to this chart that shows you the amperage and the length of wire and what gauge you'll need. Now I'm going to go ahead and use 14 gauge wire. If you're going to have high wattage lights or something like that, that requires more than I'd say 200 watts, then I'd go ahead and get a 12 gauge or even a 10 gauge wire. Okay, and the next one is this diagram from SirGCal.com and I'll leave the link in the description below. But basically this shows you how to wire everything and it's a great diagram. It, uh, it is going to be exactly what we need to wire this relay box up. Now, I want you to look at this, read it, study it, and understand it before you start this. Alright, the next thing we'll need is a Cat5 cable and that's going to run to your switches so you'll need to be able to route that into the cab to your switches um, usually seven feet is good enough maybe ten feet depending on how far of a run you need to make you'll also need a bunch of these female connectors I've got the 16 to 14 gauge blue ones and you'll need probably some of these yellow ring terminal connections maybe some others assorted connections in there I've got some uh, some mini flathead screwdrivers as well and you'll need some dielectric grease. You'll need to get these. Um, this is uh, epoxy instant mix one minute setup time. That's going to help a little bit later. We'll also need a sharpie, some tape, and you don't have to have this, but uh, this is going to make a nice install. This is a, uh, a little barrier strip, and I got this from Lowe's for about eight bucks. And Again, the 14 gauge wire, you'll need some wire strippers, and you'll need um, a hammer, flat blade screwdriver, maybe a few other things. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is take this box down to the bare minimum. The top comes off pretty easy. You're going to take all the fuses out, then you're going to take the bottom off. To do that, you'll just pull these two tabs right here on the side, and then lift up. There we go. And the bottom comes off like that. Now, this being a fuse and relay box, you'd think you could just wire this all up, but it's not the case because this is very complex and it's all routed to the wrong spot. Some of these aren't even hooked up. So uh, we're going to have to rewire this entire thing. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take off this big 
uh, battery cable here on the side. All right, and then I'll put those nuts back on just so I don't lose them. All right, now we're gonna take our little mini screwdrivers and we're gonna pull out these red and yellow pieces. To do that, there's just some little tabs on the back here. Push those and then you should be able to pull these right out. All right, now I also need to pull out this mini fuse one, which is yellow, but we don't need to pull out the one for the maxi fuse. You can just leave that one alone. But to get this one out, it comes out from the front. It's a little bit trickier, but there's some uh, clips right here on the front. And then you pull up there and then on this side as well. There we go. Now just set those aside for later. Now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna start stripping all of the wires out of here. Now I am gonna leave the large wires for the maxi fuses just because for one I can't figure out how to get those out of there they don't want to come out but two um, we don't need to take those out but we are gonna take out all the ones for the relays and all of the ones for the mini fuses. Now you don't have to take them all out um, but I would recommend it otherwise it's gonna get really really confusing all right so to take those out the first thing that you'll do is find the wire that you want to pull go ahead and grab it and then flip it over on the back side or on the front side here you'll see there is a little tab in there you want to use your smallest little screwdriver you can find here and you're going to pull that tab back while you push up and then pull down on the other side and you see that thing will come out now some of these that have been sitting out in the sun or in the junkyard for a long time you're going to break those tabs off and that's just to be expected but don't worry about that um, we're going to fix that later with the epoxy so for right now just go ahead and start pulling all these things out if you can not help it don't break the tabs but if you do don't worry about it it also helps to take your wires and kind of separate them all pull them off to one side or the other. Now some of these wires are also connected into other parts and you want to carefully clip those but um, for the most part I'm going to be using new 14 gauge wire but on some of these I'm going to go ahead and reuse um, the wire that's in there um, if, if possible. Some of these wires are smaller than 14 gauge and any of those I'm going to get rid of because um, I want to go ahead and upgrade to 14 gauge wire. Alright, that was really time consuming and tedious, but just work your way across slowly there. Like I said, about half of those uh, little plastic pieces are going to break, but don't worry about it. Those are the clips that hold these in. Um, without them, they're not going to hold in, but uh, we're going to solve that problem, like I said, with the epoxy. Now that I've got those out of there all the way across the relays, we're going to take out the ones on these mini fuses. These are a little smaller and trickier, but they work the same way. You're just going to find the little clip in there, pull it back, and then kind of push forward on the wire and then pull back on the wire, and then it should pull out just like that. Now, I'm going to separate all these into, we've got the large, the large clips here and then the mini fuses. Are a little bit smaller so I'm gonna keep all these wires just in case we can reuse them later. Alright so now I've removed all the wires from the relays across the top here and almost all the wires from the minis over here. I'm gonna leave that one blue wire uh, for a hot lead but all the other ones I've taken out. As you can see that that blue wire uh, spans here and here and provides a hot to, uh, to two fuses there so we'll just leave that one um, but everything else I've taken out, I hope this isn't getting too uh, complex here for you. But I'm going to try and clean this up a little bit. Maybe that will help help things here. So I'll just take all these wires from these maxi fuses, which is the big ones, and I'll pull them over to the side here. And there we go. Basically. We're not really going to use these except for maybe some, some high wattage appliances. But basically all we're really working with is these mini fuses. Mini fuses over here and those are going to power the uh, relays over here. 
So a few of these uh, had leads on them. A few of these mini fuses had leads on them going over here to the maxi fuses. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut those to recoup those wires. And we're going to reuse all of these mini terminals. The reason being, on the relay terminals up here, we can use these female connectors and they fit nicely right in here and the relays will fit into those female connectors. But on these mini terminals over here, um, there isn't one of these that will fit in there and work just right. So what we're going to have to do is reuse all of these end connectors. Now on the ones with the large 14 gauge or larger wire, we can just put those right in there. On the ones with the smaller gauge wire, like this one, we can open them up and insert the 14 gauge wire and recrimp them. However, if you've bought two of these, you can go ahead and strip the larger gauge wires out of your other box and reuse those without having to open up these crimpers. Alright, so I've zoomed in a little bit. Hopefully that will help. I'm also going to tie these out of the way just to keep us from getting confused here. Now what you should have is this. Everything is a blank slate up top here and you got this one wire sticking out here for your one of your minis and that's connected over here to the top. Now if you've read over if you've read over this diagram and if you understand it you should realize why that this is connected over here and that's just to provide power to two of your fuses. It would have been nice if they had a a metal block going through here like this to add power to one side of each fuse but they don't on these minis so what we're going to have to do is add power to one side of all of the mini fuses. Now the mini fuses sit in here just like this so basically that's one fuse right there and that's another fuse right there and there so you've got six fuses in here and one side of each fuse has to have 12 volts coming from the battery. So what we're going to do now is give all of the fuses those 12 volts. So what I've done over here is to take all of these mini fuse terminals. Again, these are the the mini fuse terminals that stuck through and the, the uh, mini fuses go into there. So what you need to do is take your 14 gauge wire and look how big that is. Uh, the, not, the, not the whole encasing, but just the wire. And I want you to take all of your little mini prong wires here and check to see which ones are bigger than the 14 gauge or the same size as the 14 gauge and which ones are smaller. So all of these right here are 14 gauge or larger. All of these over here are smaller than 14 gauge, meaning they're 16 or 18 gauge. And those would probably work, but just to be on the safe side, I want to go ahead and replace all of these with 14 gauge or larger wire. So to do that, as I mentioned, you can open up these connectors and replace the wire with 14 gauge. Um, another option, which I have done, is to buy another one of these boxes, steal the connectors out of there, and that way you'll have plenty of 14 gauge wires to use. But if you don't want to do that, let me go ahead and show you how to open these up. First thing you're going to do is find a hard surface. It's going to work better on a metal table, but we'll try this and see what happens. And I'm going to stick a uh, screwdriver right into there, and then we're just going to hammer it open. Okay, well that's not going to work on this uh, wood surface. And I don't have a metal surface in here, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to get in there with a screwdriver like this. Once you pound it in there, then you can twist your screwdriver and it will actually open right up. Alright guys, so I just went down to the shop where I have a metal table and I used a hammer and a screwdriver to open these up. I just wanted to show you that it can be done. Then you pull those out 
I'm going to take my 14 gauge wire, stick it in here, and very carefully crimp that back together. But like I said, if you buy the second box, then you probably don't need to do this. Just make sure, though, that when you do cut these, that you cut the wires as long as possible because you want those to be uh, long enough to reach where you're going. Okay guys, so you should end up with 10 of these little mini connectors here to go into these slots. Now we've already, we actually have 12 slots, but two of them are already uh, taken up by this blue wire here, which we kept. So you need to get at least 10 of these. Now if you can't get those open for one reason or another, um, I wouldn't be too worried about it as long as you're not running high wattage on these ones that you would use. Even the smallest wires in here look to be about 16 gauge. So as long as you're not running super high wattage on one of those 16 gauge wires, um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But just to be on the safe side, I am running 14 gauge wire on everything in here. Okay, so now we want to take these wires and wire one side of each of the fuses over here to the power distribution block. You want to choose your wires carefully though because you want it to be able to reach over here and you also want uh, the other wires that you don't choose to be able to reach from here to the far end of the relay. Now, if they're not long enough you can always just crimp them together with the butt connector or if you wanted to you could tie them into the fuses in which case you'd have to have a maxi fuse to power the the smaller fuses which um, you could just use a large maxi fuse but uh, I think to make things a lot simpler I'm just going to tie them into the power distribution block over here and so you want to figure out which way they go in there and once you get it in there right it should snap in there we go you hear that little click and that means it's in now we're just going to wire it over here for now I'll just leave it like that and I'll do the rest all right, so as you can see, we've got, um, I numbered these to make it a little easier. I don't know if you can see that, but we've got power coming from the left side of the one, two, and three, four, five, and six fuses. And we're gonna take all of those and we're gonna wire them over here to the power block. And for that, I'm gonna use some of these yellow ring terminals. All right, so it doesn't really matter which ones I choose, but I'm gonna take half of those wires and strip them back and I'm going to twist them together and then we're going to put it on one of these yellow ring terminals crimp that down and then after I get that crimped I'm going to take the other two wires run those over and do the same thing alright guys now I'll just take those two wires and connect them right here on this block Alright guys, so if you're paying attention, you'll realize what we have now done is added power to one side of all of our fuses on this diagram. So the next thing that we need to do is take the other side of the fuse and wire it to each relay. Now for that we're going to wire one side of the fuse to each 30 pin on the relay. If you look, this is the 30 pin for the relay, and the relay goes in here like this. So each one of these top ones is the 30 pin. So we need to take all of these mini fuse receptacles over here and we need to go to the top of each of these relays. Now to do that I'll start with the longest wire that I have and go to number one. I've numbered these one to seven over here. We've got six fuses so we'll start with number one and we'll put the wire in there and then we're going to wire it over here to number one and for that you could you could take one of these wires and crimp them together but instead of doing that what I'm gonna do is take one of these female ends crimp it on there that way there's just one less um, connection one less crimp connection on there and uh, that'll that'll make things a little bit easier and less cluttered and then we're gonna stick that in there and then we will move on down the line. All right, before you stick that uh, female connection in there, what you want to do is just squeeze with some pliers a little bit. Squeeze that flat so that it'll fit right into there. Push it down all the way. You can turn it over, 
make sure that it's that it's flat right there you can see it and then that's number one now we're going to move on to number two which I've numbered these this is number two so we're going to go two to two and then three to three and so on all right now keep in mind it depends how hard you squeeze that as to how hard it is to stick down in there you want to make sure it's all the way in the bottom so just take a little screwdriver and push it down to the bottom and keep in mind that that's not going to stay in there when you go to press these in that's why we're going to use the epoxy a little bit later so I've gone through one through six on the relays here and all six mini fuses here now there's one more relay and I can still use that we're just going to have to use uh, it on a maxi fuse now keep in mind that on a maxi fuse you can only get these um, down to 20 amps so they're 20 amps to 80 amps um, so that's a lot of wattage you want to make sure whatever you put on that seventh relay has a lot of wattage because the smallest fuse like I said is a 20 amp so we're going to do that just like we did over here this all these maxi fuses already have power off this power strip so you just want to take one of these maxi fuse wires I'm going to go ahead and take this very last one and we will also wire that right into the top of pin number seven the 30 pin on the seventh relay alright so check it out I've got all of the top pins wired on the relays now if you look at this diagram again you'll see that uh, we need to do a ground for all of the relays now this doesn't need to be a big wire because it's just low voltage to switch the relays on and off and it's going to be the ground wire connected to pin 85 so if you look over here pin 85 is this goes in like this pin 85 is on the left side here so we're going to attach I've got this white wire here we're going to attach each one of those to ground and we can piggyback them so what we're going to do is just go in here go in here and come out and go in this next one all the way across out the side and then we'll ground that when we're finished so the first thing I'm just going to do is strip some wires let's see I'm going to kind of measure them they only need to be about two or three inches and then I'm going to strip the other side and I'll need uh, how many of these probably eight or so and then I'm going to do the same thing I'm just going to cut a bunch the same length okay so I've cut six of these little short wires and one wire that's about two or three feet long and here's what we're going to do we're going to start with just one of these short ones and we're going to put that on one of these female ends I'm going to crimp it and then we're going to attach the next one is going to be two wires together put that on another female end and crimp it and then we're going to do the same thing all the way across until we get all of these in there alright guys once you get all the way across you should end up with something that looks very similar to this now all we're going to do is start at one end and we're going to push this down in here then we're going to bend it over put the second one in and then bend it over and do the same thing all the way across now just take my screwdriver and make sure to push them all the way down to the bottom alright so the next thing we need to do is run the other side which is going to be pin 86 and pin 86 is going to go out to your switches so for that um, you don't need to a, uh, a big wire either so for that I'm going to use this cat5 cable and inside of there is eight wires so it's going to be plenty because um, all we need is seven wires alright so just take your cat5 cable and cut the end off if you don't know what this is basically it's just a large phone cord or a computer cord and I got this from Lowe's for about uh, seven dollars so fifty cents a foot 
is actually a lot cheaper than Walmart. So you're just going to strip it open and then peel that back. You need quite a bit here so that you can reach across. Then we'll cut that off. Now you're going to separate all these wires. There should be eight of them in here. We're just going to separate each one. Alright, so once you get them separated, you need to strip the ends off, but the wires are so thin that my strippers aren't going to work. So what I've been doing is just melting them off like this with a lighter. Torch works a little better. Torch actually makes a lot quicker work of it. Don't melt the wires too much. You could actually run regular wires if you wanted to, but this method is a lot cooler because you can just have one wire going through the cab, through the firewall, instead of having to run seven different wires. All right, now what I'm gonna do is attach each one of those wires to one of these female ends. Now the wires are so small that I'm gonna have to double them over before I put it in there. Then I'll crimp it down. All right, so you eventually should end up with this, which is seven of these female connectors attached. Now we're gonna take this and plug in each one of these opposite of the white ground wires. So, just gonna go along and push these in there. Being real careful, because these wires are very small. All right, now go ahead and push them all down to the bottom. We also want to attach these like this with a zip tie otherwise you're going to end up pulling one of those suckers out of there so I'm just going to wrap a zip tie around here somewhere and attach it to this blue wire just to keep that from pulling okay you also want to at this point uh, write down which wire which colored wire you used uh, so for instance, on the first relay, I used a green wire, then a green and white wire, then an orange wire, then an orange and white wire. So you want to write that down because when you uh, feed this other end into your, your dashboard, into all your switches, you'll want to know which wire, uh, which switch to run off of each relay. Alright guys, it's looking like a rat's nest here, but we're almost finished and it's going to work awesome. So the next thing we need to do is wire each of the 87 pins on the relay. And the 87 pin is going to go to your accessories, your lights, or what have you, to turn on and off those lights. So we need to use a big wire again. For that I'm going to use the 14 gauge. And I'm going to attach those to the female ends once again. And you could... What we're going to do is run this out several feet. Now you could um, just cut that off and then later attach it with the butt connector to go to your accessory. But in my case, I'm going to show you how to attach one of these on the outside. What we're going to do is attach that on the outside. We're going to run this to here and then later on when we go to add our accessories, whatever accessory you would put uh, in this whatever wire you put in there you'll just run to your accessory and everything will be ready to go that way we won't have um, you know 18 wires sticking out for the next year and a half until we get all of the, the lights on there that we need also we've got some extra wires here on these big fuses these maxi fuses so we're gonna run those outside as well probably not all of them because I'm not gonna need that many high wattage fuses but uh, so I'll cut some of these off and I'll run the rest out and run them into here as well as many as I can anyway and those will be fused only so those won't be um, those won't be switched on and off by relay they'll just have a fuse so I hope that's not too confusing but basically what we're going to do now is just take a bunch of this wire cut it in about a foot and a half or two foot lengths um, let's see how many we need. We need seven of them, and then we're going to attach that to the female ends. Okay, guys, so I've cut seven of these wires, and before I stick them in there, I want to number them, one through seven. And I've put the, um, the crimpers on the end here, the female 
connections. So I'm going to take number one and put it in the number one slot, the last remaining uh, relay slot that I have left. And then I will just feed that on out. Once we get it all wrapped up, I'll put this on the outside and wire that into there. Now I'll go with number two. All right, guys, so I've got all six of those done. Now on the seventh one, if you'll remember, that relay I wired into this large wire, which is the maxi fuse. So on that one, the, the fuse can handle up to 80 amps or more, but the relay can only do 30 amps. So I'm writing on here, number eight, heavy duty, 30 amp max. And for that, I'm just gonna reuse one of these wires that we took out. So now that is almost everything there. All right, so we're not gonna do this just yet, but this little uh, wire transfer block here, whatever you call this thing, I'm gonna glue it on right here on the side, and there's only enough room there for nine, so I've got seven relays, and then I can use two of these large maxi fuses to go in here, and I still can use the rest if I wanted to, I would just have to butt connect those, so I think I will just go ahead and wire everything out and just connect two of those maxi fuses into here and the rest will go to the relays. But before we do that, if you'll remember, we put those female terminals and we just shoved them in there. And since they don't have the clips on them like these do, what we need to do now is epoxy everything in. If you were to try and shove the um, the relays in here right now, it would just push all those wires out and you'd have a mess. So before we do the epoxy, I don't want any of that epoxy to seep down into those connectors, in which case you wouldn't be able to get these in that way either. So what I'm going to do is take some of this dielectric grease and we're going to squeeze it out on the top here into the top of these connectors. And then I'm going to use my thumb squish it down in there as much as I can and hopefully that will keep any epoxy from getting down into those connectors. Alright, now I'm just going to take that and squeeze that down in there as far as it will go into each one of these connectors here and that will just keep the epoxy out of there. Alright, so I've got the electric grease in there. Now I'm going to flip that over and epoxy those suckers in place, making sure that they're all still pushed down in there. Now this epoxy that I've got here just mixes as it comes through the tube. It's really handy. I'm just going to make sure you get a bunch of it in there on all sides, kind of push it in. I bought two tubes that way. I am not afraid to use a bunch of it. Alright guys, so that is one minute epoxy, but since it's so thick, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let it sit for a good 15 minutes or so. But also, I'm going to add this thing on here to the side. Now the way that acts, the uh, cover will actually cover that up, so works out pretty good. And if you got any other things to epoxy, now's the time to do it. It's only last once. Alright guys, once that's all dry, if there's any doubts, come back and add more epoxy. The last thing you want to do is stick that relay down in there and the connectors shoot out the back side here. Okay guys, I've let the glue dry and now it's almost time to clean everything up, but before I do that, I want to make sure that I go ahead and put these relays in here and that they don't push out the other side. So I'm just going to slide these in there gently, make sure that the glue and the epoxy on the other side doesn't let loose and it doesn't push through. Okay guys, once you get all your relays in there, we're going to flip it over and we're going to start to clean everything up here. Um, I've went ahead and labeled all the wires. We've got all of our relay uh, hots coming out, one through seven or whatever it is. And then I've got uh, my maxi wires. I labeled those as well, one through six. And then we're just going to organize everything and zip tie it all together. 
that way uh, the wires aren't going to be pulling. Once you zip tie them all together, they'll they'll keep one wire from pulling out. All right, so now we can put the bottom cover back on very carefully. Make sure not to pinch any of your wires there. There we go. It snaps into place, and it's looking good. As you can see, I uh, glued this little piece on here also. Now we'll go ahead and start to connect some of these wires to this uh, strip here. Okay, so here's all the wires coming off of the relays right here, and we're going to wire those in. Uh, just for reference, I've numbered these one through seven over here on the relays, and uh, I also labeled these one through seven over here. So I'm just going to take my number one wire and put it in here, and my number two wire in here, and keep on going along. All right, guys, check it out. I've got uh, one through seven slots wired in there. Those are the relays, one through seven. And now I've got two extra slots. I'll probably wire in two of those maxi fuses, probably just the largest two wires, um, which would be maxi one and maxi three. All right, guys, so I got those last two in there. I hope you're not confused yet, but let me go over this real quick. Um, I've got seven different relays here. I don't have the fuses in here for the relays yet. This fuse is the seventh, the seventh um, relay, which is why I have heavy duty on there because that's a large maxi fuse. I don't have the six fuses in here, one through six yet, and that's because I need to figure out what size fuses I, I need to run. And that depends on the wattage of um, not only the appliance, but also the wire size. I could run, you know, up to 20, up to 20 amp fuses in all of these, but I also want to take into consideration how much wattage I'm using on, let's say, a little rock light. If I just have a little tiny rock light in there, um, say for fuse for relay one, I don't want to run 20 amps, uh, a 20 amp fuse. I just want to run a small fuse, and we'll go over that uh, in just a little bit. But basically, I've got uh, fuse one, two, three, four, five, and six, and those run all the six relays. And then number seven is right here. And then on these maxi fuses here, I've got um, what seven slots over here. And so this um, first slot over here is is. Uh, maxi one which I wired into here and then I think I wired in maxi um, three right here so then I've got uh, some of these other wires here which are the maxi fuses I'll just leave those um, empty I won't put fuses in there and just leave those for any additional um, accessories that I might add later on then I also have the ground wire there and I've got this uh, blue cat5 wire which is going to go to the switches. Um, let's see, I forgot to put this thing back in here. I think that might be important. I'm not sure to hold the, the clips down to keep those from popping out. Um, the ones down here on the, on the relays I didn't put back in just because uh, there's really no need, but um, those probably do the same thing, keep the clips in, but since we uh, epoxy those in, it's not a big deal. Alright guys, now it's time to figure out what size fuses we want to put in here. Now we know that our wiring can handle up to uh, 20 amp fuses, but uh, let's say we're going to run a 100 watt light, floodlight, off of this number one relay. So we're going to take 100, divide it by 12, which is uh, watts, and we get something like 8.3. Now the next size fuse up is going to be a 10. So in that number one relay spot, we're going to put a size 10 fuse. Let's see if I can figure where that goes. There we go. All right, now let's say number two uh, slot here, we're going to run a 120 watt light. So we're going to take 120, we're going to divide that by 12, and we get 10. Now we don't want to put a 10 fuse in there though, because that would blow. So we want to put the next size up, which is going to be a 15. So number two slot, 
we're going to put a 15 size fuse and then we're just going to do that all the way across until we get our fuses in there alright guys so the next thing we'll do is add our battery cable um, this just needs to be long enough to reach to your battery and we're going to put that on there and then the nut okay so then I want to put this cover on right here and then we can go ahead and slide this cover on Let's see how that goes there we go now before I wrap up I do want to make a sticker and label all of these fuses and relays so that uh, well for one I won't get confused later on down the road but also if you were to sell this or something you don't want somebody being really confused as to what's going on there um, so now we're going to go install this but um, basically what you, all you're going to do now once you get uh, the ground hooked up and this hooked up to your switches and you're going to connect this to your battery then all you're going to have to do is take your let's say your floodlight or your LED light you're going to put uh, the hot wire in here wire that to your floodlight and then ground the other side to a good ground on the chassis and then all you have to do is uh, hit your switch and it'll trip the relay and it'll come on. Let's go install this thing and test it out. Alright guys, so here's the bracket that actually came with the relay box and all I've done is cut off the bottom here and this side right here and then it's hard to see but then I just took it and I bolted it uh, onto the side of the Jeep over here. Now depending on your application you might want to make a different bracket but uh, it was easy enough just to bolt right there then after you get that bolted on it just slips right in actually there we go now it's mounted all I need to do is ground this wire we'll run this wire through the cab and then connect this to the battery alright guys let me show you how to wire these switches real quick I've got these switches that light up here and on the side they tell you what what to do here one side is ground one side is 12 volts and the other side goes to our relay so I've just brought a ground wire in here and I popped that over all of the switches here I brought a 12 volt supply in hopped that over um, if you want these lights to be on whether the ignition is on or off you're going to wire that to 12 volts if you want it to all these uh, lights to shut off when you cut the key off you're going to wire this hot wire to your ignition so uh, I want it to stay on all the time so I've got that wired to the battery and I've hopped all those over and now I know that my relay number one is green because I wrote it down earlier so I've taken that cat5 wire and I've taken the green wire put a female connector on and I'm going to attach it to my uh, first switch there and that's going to power my uh, front lights there we go that's going to power my front LED light so uh, let's go test it okay so here's my wire for my LED lights now the number one relay is right here on the number one position in this block so I'm just going to push that in there I'm not going to tighten it down because we're just testing for right now then I'm going to temporarily ground the black wire with this little test wire right here alright here goes nothing wish me luck haha <laughs> that's totally awesome alright guys once again I hope you enjoyed that do not try this at home leave your comments below any questions below I'll answer them check out the Facebook page check out the YouTube channel wait that's this one subscribe to it do check out the Facebook no, you already did that. Do check out the website, bleepinjeep.com. We've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube. None of the boring stuff. Hats and t-shirts, stickers, all kinds of cool stuff. Check it out, bleepinjeep.com. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.